Welcome back to another edition of the Prepper Recon Podcast. Whether your plan is to bug out or bug in, CampingSurvival.com has all of your preparedness needs, including fish antibiotics, long-term storage food, and water filters. Use coupon code PREPPERRECON for 5% off your order at CampingSurvival.com. Today's guest is John Jacob Schmidt from Radio Free Readout. Uh, John Jacob, welcome back to the show. Hey, thank you, Mark. Uh, it's always a pleasure to be on with you, and uh, it was a pleasure to have you on Radio Free Readout a couple couple weeks ago, uh, talking about a lot of uh, current events, uh, your new books. Uh, it's just always good to talk to you, and uh, I appreciate it. It's, it's a good excuse for us to talk. We never really get a chance to as much as we, as we want. Yeah, absolutely. We, uh, we're sort of forced to make time for it, which I, I, I do wish we did a little more often. Uh, unfortunately, since the last time we had you on the Prepper Recon podcast, uh, the world has not getting a lot safer. Uh, North Korea, they're becoming an increasing threat. They've just launched mm. a second KSM satellite, which the experts think could have a super EMP inside. And that's yes. orbiting around the U.S. right now. Uh, I guess that would be the nightmare scenario. Wouldn't you agree? Uh, absolutely. I was just reading actually an article on that uh, just just a little bit ago from uh, Gatestone Institute. And what they're revealing through – and this is not someone's hypothesis. This is not a talking head blogger guy thinking, you know, uh, sharing his take on how he thinks it is. This is – these are official government reports, testimony before Congress – uh, DOD reports about the assessment from North Korea. And now, having said that, there's a lot that they're not uh, revealing. You have to read between the lines with some of this stuff where they're saying it, but they're not really coming out and saying it. So there is, I guess, some subject subjectivity as opposed to objectivity with some of these reports. But many of it is, uh, many of the, the reports are, make it blatantly obvious without even having to read into it that this is a very real threat. Uh, it has been uh, grossly downplayed. And I, I don't think it's, I don't think it's a matter of being honest with, it is definitely not, uh, you know, being honest with the, with the American people uh, or Actually, the information is out there, and it's actually in our government. It's in it's in Congress. It's in the DOD, but the mainstream media just uh, pass in passing. They will mention it almost as an afterthought, but not really seriously pursue it. Maybe because they don't know what to do about it. Uh, it is it is a worst case scenario, which uh, for this culture. There is so little you can do about it on a, you know on a cultural level as far as the the people go we've we've changed a lot you know from the fifties it was very uh trendy for you know average Joe America to have a fallout shelter and we were right in the middle of the cold war and it was it was very much ingrained in into the psyche of the American people you know looking at this and it was a very real threat. Uh, but today we face uh, an uh, even more ominous threat, not trying to go doom and gloom here, but what I mean is the, the impact of that being so dependent on electronics for every facet of our lives from fuel and food production to transportation to communications and everything that uh, we are so much more vulnerable now to having everything instantly – shut down that how do you prepare 320 million people for that um you can't feed 320 million people no uh, and you know you can't you couldn't function it would be the it would definitely be the end of the republic as we know it not talking politically here we're talking uh, really existentially yeah and and the the author of of the article you're talking about uh Dr. Peter Pry he's one of the people that served on the EMP commission for Congress yes. and their findings was yes 90% of the population in America would die 
And that's that, just, it's just a, a straight up statistical number, you know? Um, and, and like you said, you know, this is the C, this is the CIA's think tanks. Uh, this is not, uh, this is not just, you know, Joe, whoever on his, on his, on his blog and yeah. his opinion. And, and what you said, you know, why is it not getting the coverage? You know, is it because the, the media, they don't know what to do with it? Or is it, uh, is it because people just pay zero attention to it? Like they do the, the economic problems that we're having, like they're, like they do with the political issues that we're having, like they do with, with, uh, Christians being persecuted in America and where they just kind of, uh, or, or, you know, with the, with the Snowden revelations and everybody just kind of, uh, Ho hum, that's too bad, and goes right back to uh, to to be in tract with with very little afterthought. It's the most beautiful system for destroying a a, a culture is to have them so completely immersed in entertainment and distractions, like you know the the saying from the Roman Empire was give give the people bread and circuses and. Uh, you can pretty much do whatever you want to do. They they won't pay attention. They look and yawn and go back to what they're doing. So that leaves those who are aware and paying attention, pointing and saying, "Hey, everybody, uh, you might want to look at this." Well, you're a weirdo, you know. So you have to, you know, prayer, prayerfully, you know, consider your responsibilities to your family, to yourself, to your community, how you can be the most effective. Why that's put into some people and not others, I don't know. That's you know deeply ingrained in me and who I am. Uh, so I don't apologize for it. And I just have to, I guess, accept the fact that the overwhelming majority of the people don't care or don't care enough. So, you know, I take care of my lane <laughs> That's because that's all I can do and try to inform as many others as possible. Nine out of 10 Americans estimated would be dead in the event of a EMP, especially a, a super EMP. And we're also finding that uh, follow on strikes, secondary strikes are also, uh, it's suspected that those are also planned. So by that, I mean, a lot of us have who are aware have Faraday protection uh, metal boxes and cages and things for sensitive electronics. So after an EMP, we can uh, continue, you know, functioning on some level. But I've always thought, you know, I, I would, I would hit if I was the bad guy. I'd hit with an EMP. I'd wait about six weeks and hit him again, uh, because that's when everybody starts pulling their gear out of their Faraday protection. So you just reduced, let's say, all the communications devices in the country down to maybe 3% to 5% of what previously existed. And after you do a six-week follow-on strike, you just reduce the remaining 5% down to, you know, uh, thousands or hundreds of a percentage point of available communications. And uh, the, the problem, and this is what I, as a Christian, you know, I look at this as, you know, perfect scenario for God bringing just stunning judgment on a nation, which we're deserving of, in my opinion. But uh, I pray for his mercy, at least over his remnant. But it, it's, uh, it's just something that, I, I don't know, you try to, like I said, you try to inform as many people as you can, you try to be as prepared as you can without doing it out of fear but just out of practical wisdom um, so that you can continue on afterward. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. The dollar's lost over 90% of its purchasing power since 1971. Silver, on the other hand, has proven to be a very stable form of wealth preservation over the years. And where do you buy silver? Silver.com, of course. Silver.com offers fantastic prices on gold and silver. Check out silver.com today. In Seven Cows, Ugly and Gaunt, Book One, Behold Darkness and Sorrow. 
Daniel Walker begins having prophetic dreams. Through one of his dreams, Daniel learns of an imminent threat of an electromagnetic pulse attack which will wipe out America's electric grid, sending the country into a technological dark age. If they want to live, Daniel and his friends must focus on faith, wits, and preparation to be ready before the lights go out. Buy your copy of Seven Cows, Ugly and Gaunt, book one. Behold Darkness and Sorrow by best-selling author Mark Goodwin in paperback, Kindle, or audio edition from Amazon.com today. Back to the the thought of, uh, you know, the folks that just don't want to think about it. It, it reminds me of uh, Gone with the Wind when Scarlett O'Hara, when, when she would when she'd not want to deal with something right then, she'd go, fiddly D, I'll think about it tomorrow, you know? She yep. just, you know, to, to put it off. And, uh, and, and to the mainstream media, now... We've had Ted Koppel come out, and he wasn't really talking about uh, uh, EMP, but he's got a book out, Lights Out, and it's it's about a cyber attack, which would be detrimental. I think in that in that case, we'd still have cars and and uh, you know and perhaps uh, uh, radios that were not plugged in, perhaps because they could possibly generate a, 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 an EMP effect through the 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 uh, power lines. I think absolutely. Uh, so uh, a cyber attack would probably – anything that's not actually plugged in would probably be okay. Maybe even things that were plugged in, you know, maybe they would just turn off the, the SCADA systems or cause them to fry or whatever and we wouldn't have power, uh, which would probably be a lot better than an actual EMP that takes out all the cars and things like that. But that, that was out on – that was on uh, uh, on all the – he went around to all the the morning news shows and and talked about that. And still, even with somebody as big as him, you know, he's he's certainly a little further left than than uh, uh, Radio Free Readout or Prepper Recon. Of course, you sure. know, so so is Fox News. Uh, <laughs> it's mainstream, and that's what uh, grabs a lot of people's attention that might not listen to someone like us. Uh, that you know, discount the message because the messenger is. Uh, too religious, too uh, right wing, too uh, political, too controversial, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so when somebody mainstream gets out there and, and talks about that message, it grabs a lot. It, it really did wake a lot of people up. And all these voices are corroborating one another. When you talk about the reports of 90 percent of Americans estimated to be dead within a year, that is corroborated by several different reports who are all coming to the same conclusion independently. That's something that is worth paying attention to. It's not a, an isolated study that someone did. Now, from there, you've got a few different studies coming with the coming out with the same, reaching the same conclusions. Now, that is going far and wide. So basically, you have multiple sources sharing basically three, you know, primary original sources. But those primary sources are showing a very high fatality rate just from an EMP. And then the, uh, the cyber attack is, is also something that's very real. In fact, we're, we're faced with it regularly in our country with uh, attempts and successful attempts at breaking into the power grid or government systems and information systems, communications systems uh, are regularly either being probed or successfully hacked. And then you also have the physical attack side. We've had, uh, I've lost count, I think six or seven that I'm aware of successful fiber optic attacks where they physically with bolt cutters cut the fiber optic line. And a lot of uh, people are estimating that these are kind of, I guess, uh, probing type of attacks for, you know, responding to, uh, you know, the, the time that it takes to, you know, rebuild, repair, get the fiber optic lines back up and running. But uh, these are malicious attacks. Our, our fiber optic lines for our, just our communication system alone is uh, very vulnerable. Those are physical lines that run thousands of miles out in the middle of nowhere. And, uh, you know, there's just countless points where you could disrupt that. But all that goes back to whether it's EMP or a cyber attack uh, or even a, a CME from a, a solar flare. 
what that does is it stops our food production because it stops fuel production. And electricity and electronics are required for all of that. And those are all, you know, susceptible to those types of attacks, whether cyber, whether EMP or whether uh, CME. And when you when you put that up against the backdrop of a nation that's rebelling against uh, the very source of its blessing, you know, you're that's the recipe for disaster. So it's just prudent. I think it's just wise for us to be able to strive to be able to be self-reliant as much as possible to provide for our families, provide for our needs. And if it's a cyber attack, that might be the better scenario, but those cars are only going to run as long as there's fuel. Right. Uh, you know, the, 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 because the, the fallout that's going to be very concerning is the social fallout of people starving to death, not getting, not having proper communications to understand what's going on without guidance to know what to do, uh, without food to feed them, without medical care to deal with uh, the diseases and uh, water treatment facilities and the diseases that, that would spawn off from that, that uh, it, it, would be a, it would be a very volatile social situation in, in pretty short order. Yeah, the water would be – that'd be huge because uh, Key. Uh, most people that are on their own well, they're they're reliant on on electricity to pump that. Uh, everybody else that's in a, in a metropolitan area, um, you know, they'll have water pressure for maybe a day or two uh, as, it, as it gradually grinds down or they run out of fuel for the generators or what have you. Um, but uh, after that – they're going to have no water. They're going to have no skills for purifying water. They're going to have no idea where to get it. Right. And if they do have a if they do have a a halfway decent source, uh, somebody's going to pollute it just like they did in in Haiti after the earthquake. You know, their their uh-huh. single yep. their single source of water. You know, everybody's using it to wash their clothes and bathe and go to the bathroom in. Uh, so, uh, and and that's that's what you have, and you just have you just have people that have zero idea of of how to deal with that or purify it or 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 get it and and i think that's probably going to be one of the biggest killers uh that'll take out so many people before they ever have time to starve so um yeah yeah now one Uh, one of the things we definitely wanted to get you on to talk about was uh communications because obviously our computer's going to be gone the iphone's out um, all of that stuff. Even if you've got a good uh, little ham radio set up, uh, it's it's more than likely going to be fried if it's a su- super EMP. So uh, we wanted to see if you could give us some options besides two soup cans and a spool of fishing line for uh, comms after an EMP. What are some, some cheap things we could do to put aside that would be backup comms uh, that, that, that should be protected from an EMP and that we could pull out uh, afterwards? Well, when you're talking about a super EMP, that's a game changer. Uh, I went to, I attended a conference that was put on by an electronic engineering firm that was building specifically, they were building prototypes for uh, Faraday boxes for electronic protection. And this is something that became, it was new awareness for me. And they were talking about the super EMP. And what is required to stop that? They said your ammo can, modified ammo can, your uh, modified uh, metal garbage can, your microwave, you know, with the cord cut off, all these little tricks and and things like that will not do it. They said, I think it was three-eighths or five-eighths of an inch thick plate steel sealed all the way around to stop an EMP. It will penetrate your thinner metals. And which pretty much deflated everyone who thought that they were doing something good to try to protect their equipment. To to be honest with you, if if we're faced with a super EMP and and it yields the results that are predicted, we are literally back to the 1700s where your communication system will consist of uh, couriers on horseback where you have them or bicycles until we can get telegraph systems back up and operational, which are very, you know very simple to do, they use very low low power, low amperage, 
uh, and we can use existing, you know, lines for sending really telegraph type systems would be the first in the recovery unless unless we had uh, communications from other parts of the world coming in to help us rebuild our infrastructure. But something in my gut just tells me that that would probably be Chinese helping us rebuild our inf- infrastructure because we've leveraged half of our natural resources for all the money we've borrowed from them. So uh, uh, that would just be it would just be the end and the beginning of a new era and, you know, out with the old and in with the new, it would be a completely different world, but uh, a standard, a standard EMP, there are, and we've posted them on amron.com for EMP or CME protection from electro electromagnetic pulse with modified uh, metal garbage cans with uh, old microwave ovens with uh, ammo cans and plenty of others. There's just, just tons of ideas. If you go to YouTube, and like I often say, YouTube is your friend. Go to YouTube, type in EMP protection or EMP Faraday. Just type in Faraday. And there are tutorials out there where people have tested uh, their EMP protection with do-it-yourself homemade uh, solutions for protecting electronics. So... Uh, if you do, if you do have a situation where your electronics, let me back up a little bit. Just because there's an EMP that could wipe out everything, including things that are in Faraday cages, unless they meet, you know, some serious standards, uh, that doesn't mean don't do anything, because. That was what we had to overcome when people finally threw their hands in the air and they just said, well, we're hosed, so what's the point anyway? Well, hold on a minute. Uh, that right there is just handing victory over to the to the adversary. Don't not do anything. So protect your stuff the best that you can. If you have a basement, put your stuff down in the basement. Soil is another uh, great thing for, for blocking you know, EMP. Uh, inside of a metal shop uh, is offers some protection, uh, you know, and then inside of your Faraday protection inside of an all metal shop, every layer of metal and every, every bit of shielding that you can add adds to the survivability of your electronics. Now, what should they put and what's, what's cheap? What should you put in your Faraday protection? I, I would recommend at the very least two things. Handheld radios for your group to be able to communicate. So if Bob has to go over the hill to check the fence line, he has a lifeline back to the rest of the group. Or if you're going to convoy, if you're able to do that. Uh, if you can have somebody go out and scout uh, and uh, you know leave the group, leave the safety of the group, have communications. So group communications with just something like a FRS or MERS radios or a, a small Baofeng radio if, you, if you're a ham license operator. Uh, or uh, the other thing would be uh, a shortwave radio. You must have a shortwave wave radio. If you're not a ham operator, at the very least, put a shortwave radio away, and it must have single sideband. Also, you'll see SSB, single sideband radio, because... Even in America, if we are hit with an EMP, somebody out there somewhere in the world will have their communications operational. And you have to have shortwave single sideband capabilities to monitor what's going on out there in the rest of the world. That's going to be your source for information, especially in an EMP that affects us uh, continentally. That's the end of the first half of my conversation with John Jacob Schmidt from Radio Free Readout. Tune in next week for the rest of the show. Get prepared before disaster strikes. PrepperRecon.com offers Molly-compatible individual first aid kits for your home, auto, or bug-out bag. These kits have everything you need to address a traumatic injury, including an Israeli battle dressing, quick clot, EMT shears, suture kit, steri strips, tourniquet, tough strip bandages, and so much more. Kits are available in OD Green, Coyote, Black, and ACU. $99 includes shipping. 
Go to PrepperRecon.com and click the Store tab at the top of the home page. Order today before it's too late.